In this video, we are going to be continuing the discussion in chapter 12, and now we're going to be focusing in aldehydes and ketones. Aldehydes and ketones are going to be functional groups that contain a particular type of bond. And that is, just select the yellow, a carbon double bonded with oxygen. Both of these functional groups are going to have them. So understand that this carbon double bond to oxygen is going to be a common feature between these two functional groups. Aldehydes and ketones are more common than what we think. And for example, in this slide, we have uh, examples of aldehydes and ketones. So for example, acetone, as you can see is to the left of the slide, is a molecule that's also known as propanone. It is utilized as a solvent and is present in nail polish remover, cleaning fluids, and paint. Formaldehyde is the simplest aldehyde that is out there. For those of you that have taken anatomy, you have this pungent odor in lab, and it is because of the for formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is a solution that is used to prepare, um, to preserve biological specimens. So that specific carbon double bonded to oxygen is called a carbonyl group. So this feature, the C double bond O, that's called a carbonyl group. So as you can see, it consists of a carbon oxygen and because a carbon oxygen bond is polar, as you can see, the carbon atom is going to be less electronegative compared to the oxygen. Okay, that's why we are going to be using this delta symbols representing the partial charge that is present there. So remember, this is a polar bond. So that carbonyl is a carbon that is double bonded to oxygen. Now, Understand that that oxygen is going to have two sets of lone pairs. I'm just going to write them in. Because remember, the common bonding pattern for oxygen is going to be two lone pairs and two bonds. Now, understand that carbonyl groups have a strong dipole, okay? And the partial positive and partial negative charge are the ones that I illustrated with the delta symbols. So, what differentiates an aldehyde to a ketone? Everything has to do with what is attached to the carbonyl group. So in order for a particular molecule to be called an aldehyde, you must have a carbon double bonded to oxygen and it must be bonded to one side to hydrogen. If we have a ketone, your carbon needs to be double bonded to oxygen and on either side, it has to be bonded to carbon. And that's the difference between the two. So understand that when it comes to the structure of aldehydes and ketones, there's different ways in which we can write the condensed structures for them. So if we are trying to write the condensed structure for an aldehyde, as you can see, the C double bond O H can be written as a, a CHO. The last structure that we see is going to be the skeletal structure. When it comes to the ketone, the C double bond O is written as a CO. And on either side, you can put the alkyl groups that are going to be bonded to the carbonyl. Let's first discuss how to name aldehydes. Similar to what I've mentioned before, time and time again, when it comes to functional groups, understand that the first rule is going to be, you're gonna find the longest continuous chain of carbon. Now, when it comes to all the heights, you're going to name the longest carbon chain by replacing the E in the alkane with AL. So the ending for aldehydes is 
A-L. That's how you know you have an aldehyde. Now, when it comes to numbering an aldehyde, understand that the carbon atom in the carbonyl is going to be always carbon one. So in the molecule that is given in the example, as you can see, this is going to be carbon one. This is carbon two, three, four, five. So if I write the alkane name for a five carbon system, that is going to be pentane. You erase the E, you put AL because we have an aldehyde. You don't have to specify the first carbon because the carbon atom will that is in the carbonyl for an aldehyde is always carbon one. So there's no number. Then if you have any substituents, so I'm just going to write in on step three, similar to what we've seen before. If there are any substituents, write their name and location as a prefix of the name for step one. So specifically in the molecule that we have on carbon two, we have a methyl. So that's why the final name is going to be 2-methyl pentanel. Let's now go over how to name ketones. When it comes to ketones, understand that we are going to first name the longest carbon chain by replacing the E in the alkane name with own. So again, the ending for ketones is own. So when we are numbering the carbon chain, we're going to start from the end that is near the carbonyl group and we're going to indicate its location. So as you can see, if we number here, we have carbon one, two, three, four, five. And as you can see, on step three, we're going to name and number any substituent on the carbon chain, and we're going to place it as a prefix of the name that we determine on step one. So in this case, again, we have to give the location of the carbonyl. In the longest carbon chain as a prefix of the longest carbon chain plus the ending because we have a ketone and as you can see here on number four we have a methyl so the name of this compound is 4-methyl-2-pentanone now we're going to be practicing naming aldehydes and ketones. So I'm going to practice by doing the first two problems on each road. So I am first going to be numbering the longest carbon chain. So I'm going to highlight the longest carbon chain. So for an aldehyde on the first row, we have carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four. So because of that, if we write the alkane name, it's going to be butane, 
but because we have an aldehyde, then this is going to be butanal. Then, remember, for that, I don't have to specify the location. Then, in this case, I have a substituent. Remember, there's a carbon one, two, three, four. On carbon two, I have a methyl group. So, this is two methyl butanal. Okay? Now, understand, and this is a special case that I want you guys to be aware of. If we have a carbonyl, okay, that it is an aldehyde and is bonded to a benzene ring, this area that I highlighted in magenta, that whole thing is called benzaldehyde. Within the ring, we have a substituent. To give its location, you have to know that the carbon that is holding the C double bond O H is going to be carbon one. And if I number this clockwise or counterclockwise, the methyl group is gonna be in the same position. I'm going to do um, clockwise. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. So the correct name for that aldehyde is going to be 4-methyl-benzaldehyde. Let's move on to the ketones. So in the case of the ketones, as you can see in the first molecule that I have in the second row, I have one, two, three, four, five carbon atoms. So if I write the alkane name, it's going to be pentane. But because this is a ketone, I'm going to erase the E and put the ending on. So this is pentanone, okay? And I need to specify where is my C double bond O. This one, because it's equidistant, if I do right to left or left to right, it's going to give us the same number. So if I do one, two, three, four, five, this is actually 3-pentanone. Understand that ketones can also be cyclic. And in the second molecule that we have in the second row, as you can see, we have a pentagon. And the carbonyl is within the cyclic 5-carbon system. Again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbons. Okay, So if we do the cyclic name, is going to be cyclopentane. So we are going to erase the E and put on. So this is cyclopentanone. And then when we are numbering the ring system, understand that we need to give the carbon in the C double bond O number one, just in the cyclic systems. So this is going to be carbon one, and then we can go around the ring clockwise or counterclockwise to give the substituents the lowest number. So here we have to go counterclockwise. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So the name of this compound is 2-methylcyclopentanone. The last thing that I want to mention is the physical properties for aldehydes and ketones in water. Understand that these functional groups, aldehydes and ketones, are going to be able to form hydrogen bonds with water. And the reason why they're able to do that is because they have a polar bond. Remember, the polar bond that these compounds have is that carbon double bonded with oxygen. So any of the two has them. doesn't matter if it's a ketone, like in the bottom, or if we have an aldehyde, like in the top. Now, understand that they are going to be doing this because now the oxygen atom, let me just label this. Remember that this bond is polar. 
the oxygen atom in the carbonyl is going to be able to do hydrogen bonding with the hydrogen atom in the water. It doesn't matter, again, if it's an aldehyde like we have on top or if we have a ketone like we have in the bottom, any of them will be able to do hydrogen bonding with water in which the oxygen atom in the carbonyl is going to hydrogen bond with the hydrogen mole or the hydrogen atom in the water. Understand that if you have anything with four or fewer carbon atoms are going to be pretty much soluble. Now, if you have five or more carbons in the structure will be less soluble. And remember that this reduction in solubility, okay, is because now we have a higher nonpolar character present because of those carbon and hydrogen motifs that are going to be part of the structure.